as we prepare to receive more of what you have for us. Let, it, let, let your word just open our hearts, break the barriers within, Father God, because it is your word that we find hope. And so we love you. We thank you in your precious name, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. So you can take a seat if you're standing. Uh, we're going to get ready to, to jump into the word. Um, I'm going to give you a break. I'm not preaching today. But my brother, he'll preach, sing, play the guitar, maybe dance for you. I don't know. Amen, right? As long as he's dancing in the spirit like David. Fully clothed, please. No. <laughs> so I'm going to invite Alfredo come on up as, uh, as we continue our series, Faith, Hope, and Love. Amen. Thank you. Well, God bless you guys again in this beautiful hot day. Hopefully you guys are, uh, you know, this past week is supposed to be hot. I'm surprised it's hot in Saturn, uh, Watsonville because you guys are close by the ocean. Golly, it's still hot over here. I don't know, in Hollister right now, it's like 100 or something degrees over there. So uh, if it's hot over here, that means it's going to be storching hot over there. Amen. So it's like my brother, like the pastor said, we t in this this month we will teach about faith, hope, and love. Um, in the Bible, it, everything that connects, faith, hope, and love, it connects together in the Bible. It, it, it gives you verses. It gives you, if you open the word of God, it, it will show you the, the hope that you need to have. But today, that's why I'm focused on is hope. Um, we have that hope every time we walk, when we wake up, you know, when we go to work, when we... With the family, we have to have hope every time. In the Word of God, one, one, one word, one verse, it says that, blessed are those that has not seen yet. So that means blessed are those ones that like, not hope what they have right now. It's what they don't see yet. Hope they get it. Hope they receive it. Amen. So I want you guys to uh, open your Bibles <clears throat> with me. I'm going to give a couple of verses and everything. Uh, <clears throat> in Jeremiah 29, 11. If you guys don't have a Bible, that's fine. If you guys have your phone, open it up. If you guys remember this in your mind, that's awesome. So Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says this. For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. So God right there, he's saying that is. He has plans for each one of them. It doesn't matter what age or how old, how young. My little two little girls, God has a plan for them. My little niece and nephews, God has a plan for them. In your life, God has a plan for you. All right? You're not done until Jesus calls you home. When Jesus calls you home, that means your job is finished. So you keep going strong. I know I, I got a lot of stories about brothers that I know that, uh, that went strong to the end. Went strong to the end because they, they knew that God, that God has a plan for them. They knew there was a purpose to prosper you, not to harm them. They knew. Physically, they couldn't do it. Physically, they were struggling. His one name is Brother Roy. Brother Roy was a man, a man that uh, went through hard life. He told his testimony before. Went through hard life. He went to jail and this and that. Went through a hard life. Um, <clears throat> but this man, when he got older, he received Christ. He got older, he got down, he got a disease called Parkinson's disease. Um, his body shakes all the time. His body did not relax at all. When we're at church, he's there. <laughs> it, you guys were just like, what is going on? When you're at church, we sing some Spanish songs, you know, or uh, dance like David dance in Spanish. When he feels the spirit of God, he's like, you, you do not know if he has Parkinson's disease because he was running around in circles in the church. It doesn't matter how old. It doesn't matter how sick he is. He would get up and start jumping and praising God and running around in circles. And no lie, you could tell him I talked to my, from my, po my folks. He talked to the pastor. They knew him. He was running around in circles praising God even if he was sick because he knew the plan that God had for him. He knew that I'm not finished until God calls me home. He knew that if I be silent right now and let the sickness beat me, I'm not going to be joy. I'm not going to have hope in my life. He took a step in his life. He said, I'm not going to let this disease destroy my love of God and my destroy my joy of God. He took, this, he took it to the point that to his last breath praising God. 
And that's why I'm praying that I will be the same way. You know, my last breath, I might say, Jesus, thank you for everything. I know, you know, my life, you are calling me home. I know I'm finished, Lord. Just take me, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. See, my, my, my brother Roy, man, he, he was a man that loved God with fire in his heart. Even though the sickness tried to bring him down, he still had the fire in his heart. Because he knew that the, the, the plans that God had for him, he knew that it won't not harm him, it will prosper him. It will give him more joy, it will give him more everything. That's why he hoped in everything. He hasn't seen it yet, but he hoped that God's going to be there. He knew that God's going to be there. Hope and faith, it connects together. You think about it. Hope and faith, it does connect together. Okay, we have to have hope, we have to have faith. If we don't have faith, that means we don't have hope. If you don't have hope, that means you don't have faith. So we had to have those two together, combined together. So we have to see that God always has a plan for us. God never uh, take us anywhere that, that it will harm us, anywhere that will take us and, and, and give us a hardship in our life. Sometimes we feel like God does that. We face, we face uh, um, things in our lives that, that we can't understand why. Trust me, I know. I mean, I'm not old enough. Most of you guys live longer than I have. But I, in my life, I've been through things when I was younger. You know, when I was a little kid, I cracked my head open when I was a little kid. And God wasn't finished with me yet. You know, I could have died right there. But God, he said, nope. The doctor, my mom said, the doctor, my dad and my mom said, the doctor said, I may crack my skull. But you know what, they prayed. And God said, nope, not yet. He's not done. I'm not finished with him yet. In my life, I, I've been through, I've seen things that, that I've seen things that a lot of people may not understand. I've seen things, my old church, I've seen things a lot. I've seen demon-possessed people. I've seen people, you know, in, you know, get slayed by the Spirit. I see one brother one time, he was praising God in church. He was just eyes closed, he jumping down. And one day, the Holy Spirit hit him. You know where he landed? He landed head first to the ground. I thought that was it. I thought he was knocked out. But he got up again, started dancing again, and again, bam, knocked him down to the ground. He got up again four or five times. I said, man, that must hurt. But after the service, he said, no, he felt okay. He felt good. Yeah. See, the Lord Spirit of God, when he hits, he hits. And that's why we always have to have faith. We always have to have hope. Meshach, Rashak, and Bendigo. How many of you guys heard that story before? All right. They, they have hope. And they have faith. They stand against what they tell them to do. They say, you should bow down to the statue. They say, no, I'm bowing down to only one God. And to the point that they say, okay, you're going to go to the furnace. And they try to burn them. They didn't they have no fear. Because they had hope that Jesus Christ is going to be there. They had hope and faith that Jesus Christ is going to show up and watch over them. They always have hope. When they step in the furnace, they say, in the furnace, they said that. And even though the king said, I see Four people. It was only three before getting four. The Spirit of God is always there. You have to understand the brothers and sisters. The Spirit of God is always going to be there. He's never going to leave you. And the Word of God just says He doesn't abandon you. You're not, you're not orphans. You may not have a mom and dad or anything, but you're not orphan because you have a Heavenly Father. We got the one Father that we love so much that we, you know, one Father that always going to be there. Our fathers may turn our backs on us. Our fathers may fail us. I'm going to fail my little girl sometimes. Trust me. My wife tells me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm going to fail sometimes. No, I was messing. My wife's right there in the truck. She's all you know, yelling at me right after the service. <laughs> no, but I fail all the time my little girl sometimes. I'm not perfect. I fall. I mess up. But our Heavenly Father never fails. Sometimes we feel like, you know, why God? Why are you doing this? But guys always say, you know, patience. Have patience. Because in human nature, we want it now. My little girl, Chloe, if I don't give something to her right now, you know what she'll do? She'll scream and kick and scream and kick until we give it to her. Because she can't no patience. She can't, she needs it right now in her hand. It's not just my little girl, it's even my, my older daughter, Mia. <laughs> She's in the truck too right there. <laughs> and Mia. We tell him, yeah, have patience. We're going to come. No, she wants it now, now, now. She wants it now. You know? All of us, even the little kids to adults, 
We want things right now. Lord, I, I want you to bless me right now. But sometimes we have to walk. God wants to see if you have hope. God wants to see if you have faith. God wants to see your, your hope in him. God doesn't want to. God could give you everything like that. Snapping a finger here. You can have this. Here, you can have that. But if we don't have hope in God, that God will take care of us in the end. God will take care of us in the, over there in the, in, way in the far out there. God will take care of us. If we don't have hope in that, we have nothing. We can't, we can't want everything now, now. In human, human nature, I wish I could have everything now. I wish I could have a big mansion. I wish I could have this. I wish. God said, have patience. And you will receive the blessings that I have for you. It's not what you have. <laughs> a lot of us think it's like, what well, I want. That's what God, God, I want this. And God said, but I don't want you to do this. I want this. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't think I'm, I'm, you're not ready for, to go over there yet. Have patience, have hope that you will. We ought to have hope in everything. In the word of God, it says that faith, hope, and love, but all great things are love. Those three things connected all together. All right? You have to have hope in Jesus. Before you have hope in Jesus, then you have the faith in God. When you have faith, then you start loving Jesus more. It's always, it's like a ladder. If you climb a ladder or something, if you climb a ladder and going up the roof, and you skipping, you missing two of the ladder steps, what's going to happen? You guys are going to fall. You guys are going to hurt yourself. If you guys don't have things that gas in your car, and you hope this car, this gas we have in our tank will make me to whatever place, place A, but it doesn't make it, you know, because you, got, you, have to, you have to look what God has. You have to see what God has for us. See, God wants to have a big plans in your life. And God wants to show you something that, that you may not know you could do. My brother Stubborn, you may God may show you something. You know what? You're going to have a big concert maybe. You're going to sing with worship. You're going to sing worships to thousands of people. In your mind, you say, me? What? I don't think so. Eh, no, nah, no. Nah. But God said, have hope in me, faith in me, trust in me. You're going you're gonna to be blessing a lot of people. You can't deny yourself what God has for you. You have to understand something that God, when God has a plan for you, you have to go for it. Don't be afraid. The enemy will come to you and try to break you down. The enemy will come to you and try to take you down to give you false information in your mind. The weakest part of the body, I say many times, it is your mind. But because wherever it can control your mind will control your whole body. So if you let the devil himself control your mind, he's going to control your life. That's why the guy in the word of God says, says put the full armor of God. He didn't, the Bible said, just put the shoes already. That's it. That's all you need to do. And then you go battle. No, God said in the Bible, put the full armor of God. The helmet, chest plate, the, sh the shoes of readiness, the belt, true. He said, put the whole armor of God. When we put the whole armor of God, that's when we hoping that Jesus is going to be there. And Jesus is always going to be there. How many in your life? In your life right now, I want you guys to think about. Think about it in your life. In your life, when you're walking with Christ or if you didn't walk with Christ, how many times did God was there to protect you? Every day, God is there to protect you. Trust me. Yesterday, we were driving to the beach, and, and I, was, I was driving, and I looked at my phone for the uh, address, and then the car stopped me right over. The car in front of me stopped. My wife's yelling at me. My little girl's yelling at me. I pushed the brakes, and I stopped and barely stopped. Um, but God, I believe that God was there right there. God protected us. Because I could have run into the car. I could have had a crash. And my brother Zeke right there, he got in a car accident not too long ago. He could have got hurt really bad damage. He could have messed up his back, his neck, and everything. But God protected him. He may be sore, but he's still moving. He's still talking. He's still, you know, playing with his kids. He's still with his family. It's all about hope, brothers and sisters. It's all about hope. We have to have hope in God. We have to follow what God wants us to do. We have to have faith that God will uh, uh, be there. If God's not there, that means that something's going on. If you feel like God's not there, 
Don't blame God. You have to look at yourself. So why am I, why am I not feeling the presence of the Lord? Is it me or is it, is it, I think it's God. He hates me. Trust me, I've seen a lot of people say that. God hates me. God doesn't hate you. He hates the sin, yes. He hates the sin that you live, yes, he does. He is a jealous God, yes, he does. In the word of God, it says it all. All right? He is a jealous God. But God doesn't hate you because if he hates you, he hates you, he will never receive you again. He will never forgive you of those sins. If he hates you so much, he would say, you know, that's it. You cross off the book. You're not going to, you know, you cross off the, uh, the book of life. You're not even going to heaven. No, God always gives us chances after chances after chances. God give us, uh, 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 give us a break over break after break. We get mad at our kids if they do something wrong. We yell at them real quick. We get, we get angry at them. Even our grandkids, our grandnieces, we get angry at them. You know, because what they do. But Jesus, he's the one that, <clears throat> the things you do, it hurts his heart. The things you do, it hurts him. He's angry of the sin. He's angry, like, why did you let the devil twist your mind? Why did you let the devil twist your tongue? Why did you let the devil win? Why? God's always speaking to you guys. You know, sometimes you feel like, I don't feel like God's speaking to you. God's always there. He's always there. That's why we always have to have hope that Jesus is going to be there. Hope will fill. See, when God's spirit will fill you, you hope in the Holy Spirit will overfill your cup. And the Bible says overfill the cup. He, that means that, that the presence of God is going to overwhelm you. That, that you can't. Go on. You can't keep going without the presence of God. You want, desire, you love, and you desire the love of God. I know this is going to fly. That's all right. All right. <laughs> feels good. To me, it feels good. Man. I got a little cool wind. Thank you, Jesus, for this wind. <laughs> so God has a, a, a plan for you. Not to harm you. Not to put destruction in your life, not to kill you, not to, to make you suffer. God has a plan to prosper you. That you will, that you will stay in hope in God. That you will have faith and, and hope that Jesus Christ will help you through it. We see a lot of Bible stories in the Bible. It talks about a lot of people in the Bible that had hope. Moses you know, he, he, he had hope that he walked through the Egypt, that he had hope that, that you know, that he's going to be free. He's going to free all these people. He had hope. Many times he go over and over and over to the Pharaoh. Many times the Pharaoh said, no, no, no. But he, he had a hope that my people will be free. Moses had hope. Jonah, same thing. I'm by pastor not, not too long ago. He talks about Jonah. He, you know, Jonah, you know, he had hope too. He ran away, but he still had hope. David, he had hope. When he grabbed, he had hope that he grabbed a slingshot. He was running. He saw the giant. He had hope that God is going to deliver it, deliver him that day. God is going to give him the victory that day. That's a hope that he had. He had hope that he grabbed the rock. He grabbed five stones, they say, but he only used one rock. He said he grabbed five stones, but he had hope that that one stone that he grabbed would take out the, the, the giant. And he did. All these Bibles in the story, it talks about hope. It's about the woman that touched God's hem, touched God's little thing and got healed by the blood disorder. She had hope just to touch the hem of God, not even that God touching, just touching the clothes of God. She had hope that she would be healed, and she did got healed. Man, brother, sister, God, a lot of stories. I mean, a lot of people don't think like hope, it's just, it's just a word, hope. It's deeper in that. It's way more deeper in that. We had to have hope every day in our lives. We had to have hope that Jesus is always going to protect us. 
in this virus is going around, we have to have hope that we know, we, but we have to have hope that Jesus has a better day for us. If that better day is when Jesus comes, and then Jesus come. Amen? If that's a better day that, you know, Jesus take his people away, okay, Lord, that's my hope that you're going to take me with you, and I'm going to be there in the kingdom of God. I'm going to be joyous and just sing the praises. We have to have hope. We can't, we can't deny that at all. And that's why I like that verse I just read. It, 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 God has plans for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. The only thing we need to need is have is hope that God will prosper. And he will. He never, he never denied us. He never, he never uh, uh, showed us that he never will bless us. He's always showing us. Sometimes it's not what the timing that we like. Because we like, I guess, and we like it right now. But it's on God's timing. And we have to wait on God's timing. And we wait on God's timing, that means you're having hope that God will de- give you whatever you ask for. Because God does answer all the prayers. He answers all the prayers. You pray for something and you didn't receive it, it doesn't mean that he didn't answer it. Because God's prayers, you know, you pray the Lord, please give me this and this, Lord, we needed this and this. And God has to give it to you. He said, God didn't answer my prayer. He did. Because he says, no. Sometimes that's his prayer. He may say, no, not yet. But you say, God didn't answer my prayers. And that's the first thing a lot of people, God didn't answer my prayers. He didn't answer your prayers. He did because he may not like the answer that he gave you, but he didn't answer your prayers. And sometimes it's the word no, it's a hard word. It's a harsh word. For the little kid, if you tell him, no, you can't go to McDonald's. Oh, my God. You know? No, you can't go swimming. No, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. No, 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 no. And we're like little kids. And God looking at us. He said, no, you, you're like a little kid. Why, God, why? I want it right now, Lord. God said, no. And he has so much patience. God has much patience on us. He knows that. God has more patience than we have patience on ourselves. God has patience for us. You see, if we could cry and scream and we could just whine and, and just throw us off on the ground. My, my brother Jojo's not here. Right? <laughs> but my brother Jojo, when he was younger, when, my, when he gets mad before, he used to throw himself on the floor and roll around getting mad because he didn't get what he wants. You know? I mean, we can't be like that. We can't just throw us off on the floor and whine and whine and whine and cry. We just have to have, okay, God, you didn't give it to me yet. I'm going to have hope that you will give it to me later on. Because in the word of God, said, God goes before us. He sets up things for us. He has blessings for us. We just don't, we just have to have hope and patience that we're going to receive it. Yeah. God could take away things from you. God could take away anything. Anything that, he, if you just say you're doing the ministry, and God could, if you're not living the word of God, you're not, you're doing this, God could take that ministry away from you. All right? God could take things away. We have to have faith. We have to pray. We have to pray and intercede all the time. Like the song, one day at a time. Just one day at a time, Lord. One day at a time, that's what we need to take. Teach me. But teach me how to take the one step. Teach me how to take the, the, the step of faith, the step of hope, the step, the step of love. Teach me how to take these steps. Because I know I can't keep going on my way. I don't know about you guys, so sometimes I get tired of myself. I say, Lord, I'm tired of what I'm doing. I'm tired of doing the things. I want to change. I want more. I want to feel you more. I want to hear you more. I want more of you. I want not less of myself. I want less of concentrating on myself. I want to concentrate on you. Because in, in the word of God I, we just read, it says that God has a plan for me. So God's only waiting for us to surrender and to have hope in him. If we don't, do, if we don't have that stuff, brothers and sisters, if we don't have that stuff, you, you're going you're gonna to struggle in life. You're going to struggle in life. In, in, in life, it's, it's, it's a lot of things in life that you're going to face that you may get angry at. You may get angry at so much. But you have to have trust. You have to have trust. You have to have hope that Jesus is going to take you out. Any situation we're in, financial situation, you're, you're in a situation with a bill that you can't pay. It's like, how am I pay this? You know, you just have to have 
hope that God's going to provide. He never, never doubt. He never uh, 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 put you in your mind and doubt on him. You always trust and you always knew that he will provide. Amen? Hope. Brothers and sisters, we have to have hope all the time. We can't let this, we can't let destruction come and, and, and destroy us. We have to have patience because it's connected with hope. <laughs> it's connected with hope. Faith, patience, hope, and love are all connected together. It's a ladder going up to the word of God. It's a ladder that reaching the God's ears. First, you have to have faith. Then you have to have hope. Then you have to have love. Then you have to have patience. All this right here, it's a ladder step up to God's ear. And that's when God started hearing the prayers. And that's why I said, now, my child, my daughter, my son, all right, I can see you have hope in me. I can see you love me. I see you have faith in me. I see you have patience. And I'm hearing your prayers, and soon or later you will receive it. Amen? I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to give God, I want you guys, I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes. Um, just you and Jesus right now. I want you guys to talk to God right now. Uh, talk God whatever situations you're in that you're facing in life. That Anything that, that, that maybe it's, it's fogging your, your memory, the fogging or blocking your, your, your communication, your one-on-one -on -one time with God. Whatever is struggling in your life is from your, from your family, from your grandkids, from your kids, from your wife, from your husband, or whatever that, that God puts in your, where, you, where it's blocking you to have hope in God. I want you to just confess it to God. Not, you only say it out loud, just confess it to God in, in your, under your breath. And we're going to sing this song, one more song, Glorify. I'm going to see Natasha come up here. And uh, we're going to sing this song one more time. And I want you guys to, just again, just give you a couple of minutes to uh, uh, just to intercede yourself. One-on-one -on -one with God right now. Amen. So this sister, this thank sister right here came up to me right now. She had a a, a, a a vision that God gave her, and she wants to share with you guys. So um, if you guys could just listen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, God give visions. And you know what? We just have to intercede and pray more and more that God will, you know, he promises. So I want you guys to just close your eyes. And we're going to sing this, this song. Tremble at your name. 
and glorify. Let's sing it one more time. Glorify, glorify. Let your name be lifted up and glorify. Let the earth tremble at your name. Let your name be lifted up and glorify. Come on, come on. Let your, your name be lifted up and glorified. One more time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, brothers and sisters. Let, Let your name be lifted up and glorified. One more time. Let your name. Let, Let your, your name be lifted up and glorified. Come on, you lift your hands up and say, Let your Father God, Lord Jesus. How many were blessed by today's word? Amen. How many feel more hope today than what you first came in? Amen. Every breath that we should be taking should be filled with more hope. So thank you, Fredo, for allowing God and the Holy Spirit to use them uh, um, to, to bring God's word this morning. Uh, before we dismiss, I'm asking my wife to come up. I'm going to make her dismiss all the time so she can, uh, you guys get to see her face without a mask and camera time. So, yeah. <laughs> the offering. Of the the offering. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So we're going to pray to dismiss. As I do that, I'm going to also pray for a tithes and offering. Okay. Thank you, Father God, for this day you've given us. Thank you for your word today. And let us live this week in hope, Father God, that we never lose it, Lord. And knowing that you are always by our side, Lord, taking control of every and any situation. And we also ask, Father God, for the tithes and offerings that you bless it. Bless those who can give and bless those who cannot, Father God. Because you know that we use this for your kingdom, Lord. And also bless those who uh, were not physically able to be here with us today. That you just, wherever they may be at, that you take care of them. Heal them. Bless them, Father God. I ask all of this in your precious and heavenly name. Amen. Oh, and Wednesdays, we have our Bible study online, 7 o'clock. Uh, Sundays, 9.30, we have our online Spanish service. And 11 o'clock, our English service. There we go.